Hey everybody, Kevin Schwartzell here. Wanted to put together a quick blog for you. For those of you who follow me on social media, you know that I attended the New View event uh, this past weekend. Great event. They had over 250 people there, all looking for alternative investments. They're all looking to do something else than the normal with their retirement funds. So a lot of them are getting away from the stock market, which no question has done well, but people are getting nervous about that. They're looking for alternatives and everybody there really is looking at real estate as the alternative. But what is the best thing in real estate? Uh, where should they invest? Many of these particular investors really just wanted to put their money at work. They didn't want to take on any additional work. And I think there's a big demand for an investment out there, which means there's a lot of passive investors sitting in cash and cash-like positions with their retirement money, and they're looking for places to put it. And that made me start to think about what kind of a yield should we give an investor? So some people were there trying to partner with other people. Some people were looking to uh, borrow money possibly from other investors. And some were looking to sell perhaps a partial of a note. And if you sell a partial of a note, you essentially can price that based upon yield. You know, if you have a note that's coming in, it's performing, you're selling a portion of those payments, the price that somebody pays uh, can easily be projected by the yield that they're willing to accept. So should it be 10%? Should it be 9%? Should it be 3%? Should it be 6%? How much yield should I give another investor? Uh, and I started looking into that uh, quite a bit because I do get people all the time that ask me about this when they're setting up pricing for specifically partials, as I just mentioned. And uh, they're giving away too much money is the bottom line. They, they're, they're, the response I hear sometimes is don't all investors want 10% or more? And the answer is no. So let me show you a little homework that I did very recently. This article uh, it came out in June 2019. It's all backed by um, uh, Adam Data Solutions, so you can look up the actual report there. This article was in uh, uh, a online news uh, newsletter. Uh, it says house flipping is back. It's just not as profitable as it used to be. So yes, there has been a spike. In fact, a nine-year high spike in the number of transactions in real estate that have involved flipped, and they define the flip by owning a property. Uh, you know, for 180 days or less, I think was the average flip on this one. So when they see uh, somebody owned a home and then they sold it within a year, they consider that a, a flip and that's how they track this data. Uh, but the average return on investment has fallen to an eight year low. Transactions up, but the profit is down. And that's what makes it very, very challenging for especially new investors trying to get into that field. They look at this and go, well, boy, I can come in and buy properties now and fix them and sell them. These margins are razor thin. And if you make a mistake, one mistake could wipe out your entire profit margin. You have to be very careful in this just under current market conditions. And it's an active investment. So it's probably not the best alternatives that people are looking for today who are sitting on money just looking for the right place to be. What other alternatives are there? Well, they could look at office buildings and retail space and industrial properties, apartment complexes, and hotels. But look what's happened to the cap rates. Now, the cap rates or capitalization rates are simply projections of property if someone had paid cash for that investment. So, for example, if we look at apartment complexes, according to this chart by the National Association of Realtors, apartment complexes nationwide have a 5.4% cap rate. So, in other words, when an investor then is looking to buy an apartment complex, if they see a uh, cap rate of about five and a half percent, that's a buy sign for them. So they're willing to accept a five and a half percent return on their investment in apartments. Now, the opposite is going to be here in this case on hotels uh, at 8.6 percent. But of course, hotels is going to be a pretty active investment unless, of course, you're just outsourcing all of the management. But everything else, the retail, the office space and the industrial, right around that six and a half percent mark, which again means these real estate investors are very happy with getting six and a half percent returns. We certainly can offer them more in the note business, but you don't have to offer investors 10, 11, 12% yields. Price these things accordingly. Someone would jump at a note deal versus one of these uh, apartment complexes if they could make a 7.5 or 8% yield versus a 5.4%.
Wouldn't you agree? So start to look at the alternatives that these other investors have and don't shoot yourself in the foot by uh, giving away too much money. And of course, for those who are looking for very passive investments as well, do check out the MWM Fund. It's MWM, money with meaning, mwmfund.com. You can invest there with me. My wife's money is, is in there. My money is in there. I'm also a part owner of the fund and we pay returns of 10%. Okay, but we buy notes in bulk, we get the notes re reworking again, we sell them, we profit from them, we pay quarterly dividends and check that investment alternative out as well. So we're still in the right space, everybody. Notes is where the margins are versus all the other alternatives in the real estate market. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video blog. Kevin Shortell, look forward to talking to you again in the very near future.